the 2021 Jeff Pullen Music Ministry Virtual Banquet. On Saturday evening, October 16, we had our annual ministry banquet at Fairlawn Mennonite Church in Apple Creek, Ohio, and it was an awesome night. Thank you to everyone who came out to be a part of that event. For anyone who was not able to make it to the event, or for anyone who wanted to relive a few of the key moments from that event, we have put together this virtual banquet. Now admittedly, it is not the same as being in person on the night of the event, but we didn't want you to miss out completely. One subtle reveal from the evening of the banquet was the premiere of the official music video for Nothing Can Separate Us from my upcoming solo album, which is set to release on November 16th. This song was originally supposed to be on the Poland Band There's Nothing New Under the Sun Volume 4 album, which was never actually released because of the pandemic. When I decided to release my own solo album, I decided to include this song on that album because I thought it was just a great fit for the record. And to help me with the video recording, the guys from Poland Band were gracious enough to join me and Matt Meek, who's an awesome cinematographer, did an amazing job of capturing the energy of the song and editing it all together in a pretty fun music video. So to get this virtual banquet kicked off, here is the official music video for Nothing Can Separate Us. Uh-huh. 
While the in-person banquet was full of great fellowship, wonderful service from the Fairlawn Mennonite Church Youth Group, delicious coffee from Better Life Coffee, and amazing food from Kittern Town and Country, a highlight for me was seeing all of the kids on stage with Jeff, helping him to introduce some of the new songs from his upcoming album, We Are Loved. If you missed the in-person event, you missed Taylor playing acoustic guitar and violin, Abigail playing the ukulele and singing backing vocals, Piper playing the piano, Elijah playing the bass, and Eden playing the shaker. But we didn't want you to totally miss out, so here's a little snippet from the event. This is Great Things You Have Done from the 2021 Ministry Banquet. Well, while we were at the stay-at-home order, locked in our homes, uh, I started thinking, well, what can we do to use this time wisely? And decided, well, we're a homeschool family. I've got a recording studio sitting there, and no one's able to come to the recording studio because of the lockdowns. Let's record our own music. And so we recorded a song called Great Things You Have Done that I wrote at the beginning of the year and uh, decided I'm going to teach the kids about recording. And Taylor ended up playing the violin for it, which was super fun, and brought Abigail in to play the ukulele for it. We had Piper playing the piano for it, and uh, one of my favorite singers. She also sings. She doesn't just shake, guys. She also sings. And so we'd love to share some of the songs from the album that is going to be released one month from today. So on November 16, this album is going to be streaming everywhere, and it'll be in physical form and everything. But this is the first song from the album. It's called Great Things You Have Done. I don't know how long I will travel. Taking these trips around the sun I know as long as I am able I will make the best of each one And each day you wake me up Is a day I lift you up Yeah and if these laws keep breathing by your grace, then this tongue will keep pouring out your praise. And if this blood keeps beating through my veins, I will worship you, my God, for the great things you have done for me. standing on the shoulders of the giants who've gone before us so many heroes of our faith that pointed us to Jesus Christ to the very source of life so I will walk when they have walked knowing that you walk with us these laws keep breathing by your grace then this tongue will keep pouring out your praise and then this blood keeps beating through my veins i will worship you my god for the great things you have done and I know a day will come when my days on earth are gone. We'll see you face to face, but until that glorious day. If these eyes can only see by faith, oh, this heart will love you every day because your blood was poured out for me so I will worship you my God for the great things you have done and if these songs keep breathing by you know this is the thing I got to that climactic part and I was thinking boy it'd be really cool if everybody just started clapping on the beat but then it didn't happen and now I'm stuck here oh well if these songs keep breathing your grace and then this tongue will keep pouring out 
My name is Jason Lamb, and I have the privilege of serving as the Vice President of Mobilization at Dare to Share Ministries. I want to send you greetings uh, from the Rocky Mountains here in Colorado, just outside of Denver, where Dare to Share Ministries is headquartered. Jeff Poland is not just a ministry partner with Dare to Share Ministries, but we count him, and I count him uh, as a personal friend. We have partnered with Jeff Poland Music on many adventures. He does an extraordinary job, he and his team, of leading worship. We've had him lead worship at our Lead the Cause week-long summer experience for students. He's led worship for uh, one-day events for us and, and smaller events. But Jeff, what I love about when he leads worship is small gathering or large gathering, a local church event or a national event. Regardless of the size of audience, I know that when Jeff is leading worship, he's always doing it for an audience of one. I love Jeff's heart for the Lord Jesus Christ. I love how he ushers us into the presence of King Jesus as he leads us in worship. And his passion for Jesus, in my opinion, is one of the things that sets him apart and makes it so awesome and a privilege to partner with him on different ministry adventures and events. In addition to Jeff's heart for Jesus, I love Jeff's passion for the local church. Jeff has a desire to see churches become healthy and healthier and to become thriving local expressions of God's ministry to advance the gospel, to be a light in the darkness. And I love his heart for ministry leaders, his heart for youth leaders, that Jeff desires those ministry leaders and youth leaders to become what we call gospel advancing leaders. These are leaders who are sharing the gospel personally and mobilizing teenagers to do the same and seeing these teenagers then share the gospel in their communities, on their campuses, and in their circles of friends is just an extraordinary experience. And uh, I know I personally love getting to travel with Jeff. It's always a good time. I always know we're going to worship well. We're going to seek King Jesus, but really is about being on mission together, mobilizing these youth leaders and these students to advance the cause of Christ in their circles of influence. And so I just want to encourage you as you consider to partnering with Jeff Pohl and music and, and even giving of your finances and your resources, such a worthy investment, such a worthy cause, such a worthy individual and family for that matter, um, uh, uh, leading people in the worship of King Jesus, advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ in communities and around the nation and ultimately around the world. And so I would encourage you to view your investment in Jeff and his ministry as a kingdom investment that the return will be far greater than we could ever count on this side of eternity. And so God bless you. Thank you for partnering. Thank you for being a part of Jeff Poland Music's ministry and outreach. God bless you. One thing we always like to do at the Jeff Poland Music Ministry Banquet is offer an inspirational message as well as give a bit of a ministry update. When people come to the Jeff Poland Music Ministry Banquet, we want them to be filled physically as well as spiritually. We want people to be blessed by their coming and encouraged as they go. In years past, we have had guest speakers come and join us to offer the inspirational message. But this year, Jeff had a message on his heart that he wanted to share, so he decided to go ahead and offer the message while also giving a bit of a ministry update at the same time. Here's a little bit of what that looked like. I just want to talk a little bit about Jeff Pohl and music. I want to talk a little bit about this year and where we're at. And a lot of people don't know this about me, but I actually went to college to become a high school history teacher. That's a true story. I've always been interested in politics and people and places. And ironically, in a way, my life kind of ended up putting me as a high school history teacher because I ended up for a decade of my life serving as a youth pastor, teaching high school students about the most important person in all of history, Jesus Christ. And I suppose I'm still a little bit of a history teacher, even now traveling around telling everybody about the most important person to ever walk the earth and talking about the most important event in all of history, which happened roughly 2,000 years ago. 
on a cross just outside of Jerusalem. Jesus, God in flesh, the only sinless man to ever walk the earth, willingly laid down his life, being nailed to a criminal's cross where he did not belong, and died an excruciating death. The weight of all the sin of every person who ever had or who ever would walk the earth was laid upon him on that cross. The Father turned his face away from him, and he died broken, abandoned, bleeding, and alone. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. As Jesus breathed his last breath, the sky turned dark. The gospel writer Mark tells us that darkness came over the entire earth until about three in the afternoon. Because Jesus was the light of the world, but the light had gone out. He was laid in a borrowed tomb, covered by a heavy stone. His followers disappeared, overcome by the darkness. But three days later, he rose again from the grave, appearing to his disciples and to more than 500 others, the Apostle Paul tells us. In his final words, as he walked the earth and was ready to ascend to the Father, go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. And those first followers, this is pretty awesome, they did exactly what he said. They went into all the world and they made disciples. We are here today likely aware of Jesus and what he has done for us primarily because of the faithfulness of those first followers who shined the light of Jesus into the dark places. Isaiah talked about it. And they were doing it. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. Now, first and foremost, the Jeff Pullen Music Ministry exists to point others to Jesus Christ, who is the source of all truth, love, life, and good, and in the process, not to miss him for ourselves. And we're joining him in that mission of shining his light into the dark places. So many people have chosen to join us in that mission, specifically by becoming Jeff Pohl and Music Ministry partners. And we are so grateful for our amazing ministry partners. The Jeff Pohl Music simply could not exist without the faithful support of people who believe in the ministry and who have been blessed by the ministry. So from the bottom of our hearts, Thank you for making it possible for us to do the things that God is calling us to do. We do things a little differently with the Jeff Pull and Music Ministry. Our model is truly a ministry model. We don't, we don't run a business model. And by that I mean that we could choose to be a business and to monetize the things that we do. But instead we've chosen to keep the mission missional. When someone contacts us about a possible ministry event, we don't actually ask them, how much they can pay us. We don't negotiate a contract. Instead, we pray about the event and we go if we feel that God is asking us to go. We leave it up to them how much or even if we can get paid. And some people end up being really generous and some people are as generous as they can be. But that's the model. And it allows us to go into prisons, into churches little churches sometimes, and it allows us to go to major conferences and mega churches sometimes. Money is not the deciding factor. The deciding factor is, God, what are you asking us to do? And the truth is that so often it's the people who need it the most who can afford it the least. And our amazing ministry partners are the ones who make it possible for us to get to the people who need it the most. Now, while Jesus Christ is clearly the most important person in all of history, and he is definitely the person of whom I enjoy studying the most, but I have to say I find so many other historical figures to be fascinating as well. And I was thinking about the Jeff Bull and Music Ministry, and I was thinking about this banquet. I was thinking about the last year we've experienced. I'm thinking about what God is calling us to do, what we're passionate about. And I found myself thinking a lot about Thomas Edison. I don't know how much you know about Thomas Edison other than probably the light bulb, right? Thomas Edison was a really amazing man. And as I studied more about him, I started seeing some similarities. I started seeing how God 
was using the life of Thomas Edison to really encourage and inspire me, and I hope that it will for you as well, because I want to share some interesting facts about Thomas Edison, and I want to circle back and draw some connections. But here's some things that you may or may not know about Thomas Edison. He was born in Milan, or Milan, or Mil I don't know how to pronounce this. It's in Ohio, though. Milan? Yeah, good. There's a lot of people who are, yeah, I studied everything but pronunciation. So, very good at pronunciations. Okay. Thomas was a very inquisitive boy. In fact, after observing the behavior of birds, he once made a mixture of water and mashed worms. And he fed it to a neighbor girl to see if she could fly. She did not fly, but she did get sick. Thomas Edison got scarlet fever as a boy, which resulted in hearing loss. He spent the majority of his life uh, hard of hearing. Now, because he was hard of hearing, the teacher at the school, the public school, thought that he was a troubled child, and she didn't want to give him the extra time, so his mom ended up taking him home and homeschooling him. And she figured out real quickly that if he got a little bit of attention and a little bit of direction, he was an exceptional student, and one of the subjects he loved so much was science. So she got a science textbook, and he devoured it. In fact, one of the things he became especially fascinated to learn about was Samuel Morse, who was the guy who developed the Morse code. And by the way, this is kind of fascinating, but the first official telegram was sent in 1844 from Washington, D.C. to Baltimore, Maryland. It was actually a passage from the Bible. First thing that was uh, telegraphed was, What hath God wrought? Numbers 23, 23. But back to Thomas Edison, as a teenager, he worked as a newsboy for a train company, and he, he noticed that uh, there was a newspaper company in Detroit, one of the stops, that was throwing out leftover materials, and he decided, being uh, quite the opportunist, uh, that he would gather these materials and create his own printing press, and that's what he did. So he created a, a weekly newsletter, and he sold them on the train where he worked. In fact, because of his, his elaborate understanding of Morse code, he was able to intercept Civil War news, put that in his newspaper, and became an incredibly popular newspaper salesman because he had the cutting-edge news. One day, he saw the station master's three-year-old son about to get hit by a train. Thomas Edison dashed onto the tracks in front of the train and rescued the three-year-old boy. As a thanks, the station manager taught Thomas how to become a telegraph operator, which was his dream. At 16, he became a telegraph operator with Western Union, but he was not content to be just a telegraph operator. He wanted to be the best telegraph operator possible. So he worked hard to become both fast and accurate, and at 21, he was promoted to work for the Western Union in Boston, Massachusetts. While in Boston, he worked at night and he tinkered during the day. The first invention that Thomas Edison ever made and patented, which by the way, he patented 1,093 patents, 1,093 inventions throughout the course of his life, still a record today. And the first invention that he ever patented was a voting machine. Because he noticed that the voting process took a long time. People had to write the whole thing out and people had to count it. And so he's like, I think I have a fix to that. So he created this machine that would do it electronically, automatically, and no one wanted to buy it. Turns out the politicians rather liked that it took a long time to write it out and gave them time to change your mind. The voting machine was helpful and practical, but it didn't go. And so, though it didn't sell, it did gain him notoriety. People recognized about him that he was a brilliant inventor. Some even started sending him money, recognizing that he was on the cusp of something great, and they started sending him money. That was his first investors. In 1869, he moved to New York City to focus on inventing. He left the Telegraph, Western Union, and moved to New York City. In 1870, he purchased a large building and moved to Newark, New Jersey, to start a company called Newark Telegraph Works with his own inventions. And while most inventors prefer to work alone, I found this very fascinating about Thomas Edison. While most inventors prefer to work alone, Thomas was different. He preferred to work in a team setting as long as he was the boss. He surrounded himself with the best men he could find who would help him in his work. He called them the boys, and they affectionately referred to him as the old man, even though he was only 24 and many of them were older than him. Some of those boys worked with him for two to three decades. In 1876, he moved once more from New York, or from Newark, rather, New Jersey, to Menlo Park. Maybe you've heard of Menlo Park. It's about 25 miles from New York City, and it was here that things really started to take off for Thomas Edison. 
At Menlo Park, he was able to build exactly what he wanted, and about a dozen of the boys followed him in the move. So Tom and the boys, they would often be working on up to 40 different projects at the same time. The year was 1876, and it was also the year that Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. But the problem with the telephone was that it used a metal conductor, and because of that, you had to scream into it, and it would only travel a short distance. Well, Thomas Edison thought he had a fix. So he'd rather use a composite metal. Suddenly, the telephone would be able to go for miles and miles, and you could hear very clearly. But stumbling on to fixing Alexander Graham Bell's telephone also led Thomas Edison into a different invention. The carbon transmitter was what allowed for his invention of the phonograph. Now the phonograph was the very first, is a rudimentary record player. Anybody in here still like record players? I, mean, I love me a record player. Thomas Edison was the inventor of the record player. He was the first person to ever record his voice and play it back. Thank you, Thomas. Appreciate that. The invention of the phonograph led him to a trip to Washington, D.C., where he spoke at the National Academy of Sciences. There in Washington, D.C., he had his photograph, his photograph, rather, taken by the famous war photographer Matthew Bradley, who ironically studied under New York City uh, resident Samuel Morse. Isn't that funny? This is where it gets really interesting. 1878, Thomas Edison is invited to go out west to Wyoming to watch a solar eclipse. A bunch of his scientific buddies are getting together and they want to go. He wants to use this new tassimeter, it's called. It's a thing that's basically just telling you the temperature. Uh, it was a kind of a bogus trip for him. It wasn't all that exciting. But on the way back, he decided to ask the train operator if he could ride on the very front of the train. He wanted to see God's creation from the front of the train. And they allowed him. Could you imagine Thomas Edison just chugga, 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 just watching on the front of the train? But he wasn't allowed to uh, stand on the front of the train through the tunnels because there was no light in the tunnels. And because there was no light in the tunnels, it was actually dangerous because uh, something could happen. He could be killed. If they, they, they were going to hit something, they wanted to hit the train, not a person. But you can see how this got him kind of interested. What if we could put light in the tunnels? This led him to start thinking about how could we create a light bulb. Convinced that he could create a light bulb, he actually boasted that in two weeks' time he would be able to light up an entire neighborhood with light bulbs. And he figured it out, but there was a big problem. Everything about his design worked flawlessly except for the filament. And here's the problem. And I don't know if you have ever heard this or not. This was news to me, but I thought it was very fascinating. He produced a working electric light bulb by using platinum. The problem was platinum is very expensive. And so it would only be something that was available to rich people. He wanted to create light that everyone could enjoy. So Tom and the boys tried every possible material they could think of to make a light bulb that even poor people could afford. Altogether, they tested over 3,000 different materials. Tom and the boys believed this, that finding out what didn't work was just as important as finding out what did work. It was all a part of the process. Over a year and a half after saying he could produce the light bulb in two weeks, he finally produced the light bulb that everyone could have access to. It turns out simple sewing thread covered in carbon and, and being baked to just the right temperature did the trick. On October 22nd, 1879, Tom's light bulb glowed for 13 and a half hours, but the second one glowed for over 100 hours, and he knew he had solved the problem. This is one of the quotes from Thomas Edison that I just love. He says, you come across anything that you don't understand, you don't rest until you run it down. Most fellers try a few things and then quit. I never quit until I find what I'm after. You see, here's the truth. Thomas Edison lived in a world that was filled with darkness, literal darkness, but he found a way to pierce the darkness by giving people access to the light. And we're doing the same thing. Somehow our world seems to be even darker now than it was when Thomas Edison walked it, but, but we're focused on shining an even brighter light. When you partner with us in Jeff Pohl and Music, that's what you're doing. You're partnering with us to shine the light of Jesus into the darkest places. Thomas Edison understood the value of having a team. As a ministry, we want to put a few teams together as well. 
I'm hoping that God is maybe working on, uh, on your heart tonight, that maybe you want to join us, and possibly that would be uh, from a financial standpoint, I think that's what we classically think of when we think about supporting a ministry, and Lord knows we couldn't continue to do what we do without financial support, but maybe you actually want to get physical. Oh, great, I just had that old Olivia Newton-John song stuck in my head. Sorry, everybody. Physical, physical. Anyway. Maybe you want to do something physical, and we want to offer some opportunities for that because we need your help. One of the strange ways that God has been using us in Jeff Hall Music is actually in the running community, and maybe you heard some of that. For the past several years, we've facilita facilitated the 5K Every Day in the Month of May Challenge, which impacts hundreds of people. We have a chance to share the gospel with them. We have a chance to get people out and active. I love it. It's amazing ministry. We also have had the opportunity to put together our own 5K and music festival and have been brought in on the Worcester Challenge Series, which is three races in Worcester. Jeff Paul Music is actually the title beneficiary of those races. And it gives us an opportunity to be in the community to represent Jesus. But we can't do it on our own, and so we need help. These events help us to make our presence known in the running community. They help us to raise funds for the ministry. And for each event, we typically need at least 10 volunteers so that we can help make it as good as it possibly can. If you would be willing to be part of our JPM race team that we're putting together, volunteering to help at the races, we're going to put together a list of people that we can contact who have indicated that they're interested in helping. So you can pray for the event, you can show up, you can smile, you can serve, you can help us shine the light of Jesus in our community, all while helping us to raise funds for future ministry. It's a very practical way to join us. The work of Thomas Edison became known far and wide because people talked about his work. We could use your help getting the word out about JPM. We're also putting together what we're calling the JPM Street Team, and it's a very simple idea. It goes like this. If I put up uh, 10 flyers in 10 different places that I have access to, then 10 flyers go up. But if we have 10 people who are willing to put up five flyers where they're at, then 50 flyers go up. Of course, on social media, it's the same thing. If I post something, then it goes out to my friends in my circle. But if we have a street team that every time I post something, they're shipping it out even further, then the gospel can go out farther and wider, even through social media. The power of a street team is exponential. And like with the JPM race team, we're wanting to put a list together of people who are interested in being a part of the JPM street team. And of course, Thomas Edison also experienced the power of having investors who believed in him. He was willing to do the hard work, and he was able to push through the years of finding ways not to create a light bulb because he had investors who made it possible for him to keep going. When you invest in the Jeff Pullen Music Ministry, you are investing in the kingdom of God. You are truly storing up treasures in heaven. We're willing to do the hard work. We're willing to continue to find the most effective way to share the gospel right now, right here or wherever else God sends us. But we do need your help. And so if God is moving in your heart to become a monthly or an annual investor, or if you even want to give a special gift, your investment will make a huge impact and will go towards shining the light of Jesus into the darkness. And I also want to say for those of you who are already partnering with us in the gospel, thank you. Together, we are helping people walking in darkness to see a truly great light. We hope that you have enjoyed the 2021 Jeff Pohl and Music Ministry Virtual Banquet. Thank you for watching. We hope that you will consider joining us in ministry by signing up to be a part of the JPM Race Team or the JPM Street Team, which I talked about that night. Perhaps God is even moving in your heart to become an investor in the Jeff Pohl and Music Ministry. And if that's the case, we would love to hear from you. You can always contact us through the webpage at www.jeffpolandmusic.com. Just click on the Become a Ministry Partner link on the homepage and fill out the quick form and we will be in contact with you soon afterwards. 
One major announcement we made at the ministry banquet was that my brand new solo album, We Are Loved, is being released on November 16. I am super excited about that. In fact, everybody who showed up for the banquet in person got a free copy. Sorry, we're not giving those out virtually, but you can get your hands on it on November 16. It's gonna be available everywhere to stream, everywhere that you listen to music, and it will be available to purchase both digitally and physically as well. One announcement I did not make at the in-person banquet, but I am making right here, right now, is that we will be premiering all of the songs from the album on Monday evening, November 15, on YouTube. So tune into the premiere at 7 p.m. to hear all of the songs and even hear a little background from each of the songs as well. And you can join in with the live chat during that premiere. I will be chatting and love for you to join me. I would love to hear your response from the songs and to be a part of the chat as the songs are premiering that night. So please mark your calendar and plan to join me on YouTube on Monday evening, November 15 at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will also be making a big announcement during that premiere, so I hope you will plan to join us there. Until then, I just want to say thank you for tuning in to the 2021 Jeff Pullen Music Ministry Virtual Banquet. We hope you enjoyed the event. Feel free to share this with others. And now, to send you out, we wanted to share one of our most recent Midweek Worship Connection videos, which is a resource we've been putting together throughout the year. And if you like this video, you can find more of them on our website or on Facebook or on YouTube. Welcome back to the Midweek Worship Connection. Over this past weekend, I was scheduled to be in Iowa working with a church and training them in evangelism. Sadly, that training trip never happened. It was canceled due to a terrible tragedy that happened within the community. I spoke about that a little bit last week and you can feel free to go back and check out that video for those details. But as I have continued to think about and pray about that situation and for the community and individuals impacted by it, I'm reminded that Jesus willingly suffered and died to save us from the hell that we are going to apart from Christ and the hell that we are going through apart from Christ. The Apostle Paul once wrote to the believers in Rome, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Romans 1 verse 16. My heart resonates with this timeless truth. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, not only for eternity, but for here and now as well. The truth of the simple gospel message is powerful. God created us to be with Him. Our sins separate us from God. Sins cannot be removed by good deeds. Paying the price for sin, Jesus died and rose again. Everyone who trusts in Him alone has eternal life, and life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. Powerful, life-changing, eternity-changing. In sharp contrast to the tragic situation that surrounded my canceled trip to Iowa, I had the privilege of leading worship for the past several nights at an event in Wilmot, Ohio called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. During the event, a handful of dramas are acted out on stage depicting real-life scenarios in which characters make choices either for good or for evil and ultimately end up dying and finding themselves standing at the gates of heaven where they will either be welcomed into the loving arms of Jesus or thrown into the fiery depths of hell. And of course, all that is required for admission into heaven is simple faith in Jesus Christ while on earth. It's an intense drama, but one that causes the audience to pause and to consider their own life choices and whether or not they have ever put their faith in Jesus Christ as the only way to God the Father. Following the drama each night, the audience was given an opportunity to put their faith in Christ right then and right there. And while I'm sure there were many more who put their faith in Christ, but were too timid to let us know about it, a total of 144 people proudly declared that they had either put their faith in Christ for the first time, or rededicated their lives to Christ through the event. Wow, that is awesome. Go God. And as always, it is such a privilege to be used by God, to be a part of something so amazing. I find myself once again overwhelmed by thankfulness to our amazing Jeff Pull and Music Ministry partners who continue to make it possible for us to pour ourselves into the awesome work that God has called us to do. And the reality is, 
Sometimes we plant, sometimes we cultivate, and sometimes we reap. Over the years, we have spent a lot of time planting, simply pointing people to Jesus by sharing our faith with them and modeling what a transformed life in Christ looks like. We've also spent a lot of time cultivating relationships and walking with people who may not believe in Jesus yet, but we continue to pray for them, care for them, and share with them because even though they don't believe in Jesus, Jesus sure does believe in them. And occasionally, we have the privilege of being a part of the reaping. What a beautiful thing it is to see people let go of their sin and shame and embrace the loving arms of Jesus. Wherever you find yourself today, whether planting, cultivating, or reaping, or maybe being poured into, I plead with you, do not be ashamed of the gospel. Do not lose hope. Allow the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ to transform you and to fill you with joy even today as we prepare for the final transformation and endless joy of being welcomed into the loving arms of Jesus forever in eternity. We hope you are encouraged by this weekly offering of the Midweek Worship Connection. If you are, would you do us a favor and leave a comment to let us know? We sure would appreciate that. We are so excited to announce the release of Jeff's much anticipated solo album called We Are Loved. We really believe you are going to love and be blessed by this album that he's been working on for so long and is finally able to release on November 16 in digital and physical form. You can stream it on Apple Music, Spotify, or wherever you listen to digital music, and you can physically purchase the CD through our website as well. To send you out today in anticipation of the We Are Loved album release, here's a song from that album that Jeff wrote with his good friend Rocky Fabia Jr. The song is called You Make This World Move. Tell you this as if you didn't know God, you are everything, the sustainer of it all. You stretch out the morning skies, you ordain the sun to rise, and at your command the evening falls. From you, the world we see, it was made by you. There is nothing we can do without you. Make this world move, you make my heart beat. You are the air that I breathe, and the song that I sing is my response to you. You make this world move. Things
seen and unseen You were before all things and through all things And by your word you are 